Hi, in this video I'm going to look at net gearing, which is basically a way to measure a company's debt. Now company debt is really important because if it gets too high, it can become dangerous. If a company is struggling and it has too much debt, then it's more vulnerable and more likely to go bust. Having said that, company debt is not always a bad thing. In fact, some corporate finance theorists argue that company debt in moderation can be positive for a company. Let's look at an example to see why. Let's imagine I'm starting up a new business, say a printing business. I need 10 million pounds to get the business up and running. So I raise 10 million pounds from investors. And in return for that money, I give investors shares in the company. And then if things go well, I'll pay dividends to those investors in a few years time. Alternatively, I could raise the money by getting seven million pounds from investors, give them shares and potentially dividends, and get three million pounds from the bank that's debt. And of course, I'll have to pay interest on the debt straight off. Corporate finance theorists say, taking this approach, the mix of investors, shares or equities, the mix of equities and debt is cheaper. And that's because if I pay dividends to the investors, those dividends come from the post-tax profits. The interest payments on the debt comes from the pre-tax profits. So as a result, it's cheaper this way, using debt reduces the company's tax bill. Now obviously if you have too much debt it's risky and actually in a startup it probably makes sense to raise it purely from equities because it's lower risk. But in a business that's been going for a while you're much more likely to see this mix of equity, investors equity, see that mix of equity and debt financing a business. So if we're going to measure the net gearing of the business and see how much is funded by debt and how much by equity, we can use this calculation here. So on top of the ratio, we have total debt minus cash, which is the same thing as net debt. We look briefly at net debt in the video why you should focus on enterprise value, but you can find total debt, you can find the short-term debt in current liabilities, you'll find long-term debt in long-term liabilities, add those two together, you've got total debt, you'll find cash in current assets, or you may even be able to find a net debt figure in the cash flow statement. So that's the top line of the ratio. On the bottom, we have shareholders equity, which is the same number as net assets. Now, what is that shareholders equity number? Well, in this example with the startup, the shareholders' equity is the 10 million pounds that the investors first put in, or here, the 7 million pounds. But that equity figure isn't frozen in aspic, it changes by the year. Maybe the, the company issues more shares, then the shareholders' equity will rise if it gets more money coming in for those shares. Or more likely, as the business makes profits, the business won't pay all of the profits out in dividends, the business will keep some of those profits perhaps put it in the bank account, those retained profits in the bank account are then added to shareholders' equity. So let's imagine the total debt is 10 million, the shareholders' equity is 100 million. We divide 10 by 100, then we times it by 100, and we get a net gearing ratio of 10%. That's a low net gearing ratio. I wouldn't be the slightest bit worried if I saw that with most companies. What it means is it's low risk, but actually the company could save some tax by boosting up the debt and reducing some of the equity. Now, if I saw another company with a 10, 20% net gearing ratio, I'd still consider that prudent. All other things being equal, I wouldn't lose any sleep. If I saw a net gearing ratio of 50% or higher, I'd be getting worried, especially if a lot of the debt was short-term debt, because obviously if it's short-term debt, it's going to have to be repaid soon, and that's dangerous if a company's in trouble and can't find the money to repay the debt. 
Having said that, there's no hard and fast rule on what is an appropriate net gearing ratio. It varies from business to business, it varies from industry to industry. So if you're looking at a company, you see its net gearing ratio, say 35%, you're not sure if that's too much or it's okay, have a look at some of the other companies in that sector and see what they're doing and that may give you a better idea whether the net gearing is appropriate or something to fret about. Last point is some people, when they calculate the net gearing ratio, they take intangible assets out of shareholders' equity. So that's things like the brand and goodwill that may be acquired if a business buys another one. My view is don't take the intangible assets out, it makes things too complicated. Having said that, if you want to dig deep, if the intangible assets are a big percentage of the shareholders' equity, that's a bit of a worry. If that's a scenario, the net gearing ratio should be lower because it'll be harder for the company to pay off debts if it needs to, if things go wrong. Banks aren't so impressed by intangible assets. They like good, hard assets. So that's a quick overview on the net gearing ratio. Hope you'll find it useful. We actually did this video in response to a reader request. So if you can think of a topic, another topic you'd like us to do in a video, please let us know. I'll be back with another video soon. So until then, good luck with your investing. <laughs>